Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. On today's show, we're talking prospects because that's what you do in the off season when prospect lists come out. It's going to be fun. I'm joined by Lindsey Crosby. We're going to be talking about all the Padres stuff from Lesko to Jackson Merrill to people you may not have heard of, whether the Padres system in general has recovered from the Juan Soto trade in terms of its prospect return, all that and more, guys. You know what you're listening to. Let's get started. You are Locked On Padres, your daily San Diego Padres podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Padres podcast, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day for Oh, God. Uh, Wednesday, um, (laughs) January 25th. As always, I'm your host with sometimes occasionally, but certainly not always the most, Javier Reyes. Follow me on Twitter at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, or at L-O underscore Padres for the show. Or check out Just Baseball, where I write sometimes. Great website. Or check out this Tatis bobblehead that you would see if you are following the YouTube. Lockdown Padres on YouTube, and you can check out the description. He's really cute, and he has really cool little sneakers but i'm not the only one it's not just me and tatis i'm being joined by the illustrious the big baseball guy mr <laughs> Lindsey crosby host of locked on mob prospects it has been a while sir how are you doing it has been uh, too long but i am doing well it's so good to see you so good to see uh to be here fernando pleasure to make your acquaintance <laughs> nice to see you on the stream uh just just wonderful to be back talking all about the dads Mm, mm, mm. I mean, it's always a good time to talk to dads. It could be in the thick of a tornado. It can be the end of times. It could be like a Marvel. The mutants are being attacked by the Omega Sentinels or whatever. The, I've been reading a lot of comics lately. Whatever it is, it's still always great to talk about the Padres, man. And mm-hmm. have you on to talk about prospect stuff because, you know, some of the big hitters, the heavy hitters, the, the superpowers dare I say, of Prospect World, recently released their new Top 100. Baseball America, you know, you've got Fangraphs talking about it a little bit, some other websites, I saw CBS Sports, you've got MLB.com. Everybody's talking about prospects a little bit, also because it's, you know, the middle of the offseason and people have officially run out of... I know we're kind of due, it feels like, for another no way that's happening rumor. Oh, I heard it, i.e. the Yankees ESPN host who was like, oh, I heard Fernando. Uh, that the Yankees are trying to trade for him. Like, I feel like we're due for one of those, but even still, I'm excited to talk prospects with you, man. What is, what would be the dumbest possible trade that could be floated right now? (sighs) Right now? Right now. Like, while we're recording, (sighs) Jeff Passan puts out a tweet, and it's like, hey, this this deal is rumored to be happening, and it'd be something dumb. Like, Brian Reynolds to, I don't know, the Mariners. I've removed that name from my pod, podcast I officially. I will no longer say his name on the show. It used to be Eric Hosmer that I no longer say, uh, but he's you know gone now. Uh, yeah. I will no longer say He can't hurt Pirates you anymore, Javi. Yeah, he, he can't, can't hurt, hurt you anymore. anymore. He can't hurt. I, when he left, it really did feel like that Goodwill hunting scene when it was like, it's not your fault. Like, he can't hurt you. Like, that's really what it felt like after um, Eric Hosmer left. But yeah, I refuse to talk about the Pirates outfielder. I Got think it. a Trout-Otani thing is always going to be oh, an man. easy one. I think like... Shane Bieber of Cleveland or Corbin Burns, like a pitcher on like a whatever team or Cleveland's good, but like I, that feels like one that maybe could get a little bit of traction. You know, I can see that. Maybe Chris Bryant from Colorado. That would be a fun one. After year one, they give up and they're like, we don't want him anymore. I mean, he he, he could barely play with the back injury and stuff last year. So like, they're like buyer's (laughs) remorse. We'll give him away. Take him please. You know, that would be, that would be just wild to me. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. But we're not talking about regular baseball stuff, are we? We're talking about prospects. And I wanted to have you on to give your takes on, first and foremost, the kind of the heavy hitters of the Padres farm system. As everybody knows, and everybody who's listened to this show, and quite frankly, any show, the Padres have blown up their farm once upon a time. By many, it was like the best farm system in the history of baseball, circa... 2015, 2016, 2017, whatever, around that time. And they've traded a lot, and they've got a lot in return, obviously. The Juan Soto mm-hmm. trade, though, really, dare I say, just kind of bankrupting their farm, right? They lose Abrams, they lose Gore, a player that you and I 
did an, an entire episode a about whole last show year. on <laughs> yeah, one he guy did a whole show because it was one of the craziest like prospect things in the world i know a lot of people are hating on the nationals i actually thought they got all things considered a cool deal but i'm wondering the padres are recovering they're regenerating they are wolverine after speedball hit him with a nuclear explosion right all that's left is the exoskeleton and he's trying to regenerate have the padres regenerated enough do you think with guys like Jackson Merrill and Dylan Lesko, who are kind of making the rounds as the, or at least they're, they're in most people's top 100 right now. So I guess let's start with Merrill, who is kind of the consensus guy for a lot of people. Is he really like a top level guy? Because it's kind of funny because this is a dude who, after he was picked, a lot of people were like, another shortstop? Really? Like we just, we have Tatis, we have Kim, we have all these dudes. And then they select a shortstop and it seems to be going well. What is your take, Sir Lindsay? So a couple interesting thoughts about Jackson Merrill. The first one is that there's not like there's consensus that he is a top 100 prospect, but where he goes very much not a consensus. Mm -hmm. Baseball America has him like 22 MLB pipeline has him like 83. So Mm. big spread as to where they have like where they have this guy, but people who are concerned about, Hey, you have another shortstop. Just about every right-handed position player on the field probably started out as a shortstop at one point in time. So you can never have too many shortstops. What I do like is when we saw him play some last year, he got about 55 games in. Uh, He made it look like he legitimately could stay at shortstop. That was a question being 6'3". There was some question about as he did the physical development because he's, you know, he's 18, 19 years old. As he grows... Will he slow down? Will he get too big for the position, have to move to third base or something like that? He looks like he could stick it short. And so Mm. the question is just what type of hitter does he become? How far does he go? And he improved a lot on some of the things that he was kind of criticized for when he got drafted. The big thing to me that I took away from watching him last year is he got much better against off-speed pitches. That was something where a lot of prepsers feel like they struggle with that because the stuff that they're facing isn't that good. They can necess- they can sit fastball and make- get it done. And he improved dramatically against both off-speed, like just the pitch recognition and then making contact, as well as getting better against lefties. And those are a lot of the difficulties you have when you're a young player first getting into professional baseball is dealing with that mm-hmm. spin and off-speed and then dealing with talented left-handed pitchers. So I'm excited about that. This year is going to be really interesting to see kind of what happens to Jackson Merrill. Uh, And I'm assuming he's going to, he's going to go back to low a, I don't know. He did really well in low a 45 games with like a 325 batting average. So he may not go back to low. He may go to, to, to high a we'll see what happens, but either way consensus number one. And I think that's the right place to put him. Um, I mean, it's exciting stuff. It's fun, but it is it is kind of crazy how like a guy could rage from being a top twenty guy to eighty and whatnot. Like this is, you know, the pods fans are used to kind of I feel like knowing where some of their mm-hmm. prospects, how they are viewed amongst uh, MLB executives and prognosticators like yourself, whatever you want to say. But it's the prospect I, I like it really, apparatus is what I always call it. The prospect, the prospect apparatus. apparatus, the prospect machine. Yes, <laughs> some people say the prospect machine, man, is churning out guys, and I think that. You know, for the most part, Padres prospects have been have turned out pretty well, it feels mm-hmm. like, over the past few years. I think that they actually get a little bit, A.J. Prowler and company, I think actually a little bit underrated. Their ability to kind of procure and bring around prospects, considering how often they tend to trade them. You know what I mean? There are other teams who, once they bankrupt their farm, it's like, we, we don't hear from them six years. Like, that's it. Like, yeah. they don't have anything. And then with the Padres, yeah, I know that not everyone is going to turn out perfectly, but... You know, this is a team that back in 2015, they traded, you know, Trey Turner for Will Myers. That's a death sentence for like a lot of teams. And then all of a sudden yeah. they bring back C.J. Abrams or not bring back, but they find C.J. Abrams. They mm-hmm. they get guys like Wilcox later in the draft or whatever it was. They get guys like um, Mackenzie Gore. You know, you get like all sorts of players, Robert Hassel, James Wood, obviously who they made in the Soto trade. And now look at them. They're recovering slowly but surely. I hope. I hope. Yeah. The thing that I can that I appreciate about the Padres draft picks and the way that they approach it is when you have a bad farm system, there's an inclination from a lot of front offices to go out and make safe draft picks. 
to go yeah. out and get those college players that have a high floor but maybe a lower ceiling because you see, oh yeah, our system's a, bo- a bottom five system in baseball. We need an infusion of talent. And they're like, let's let's get up to a base level of competency and they'll take the safe pick. And the Padres, I feel like, are good about understanding, no, if we're picking in the first round, we need to go get a guy with a high ceiling. Now he may be a prepster uh, and we're not going to be afraid to get go get that prepster because... One, we have plenty of time to develop him. We're a good team right now. But two, we can always trade him later if we don't think he's going to work out and he'll have more value because there's still a longer development curve to be done. And so they don't fall into that trap. Like the Kansas City Royals draft in 2018, they needed competency in pitching and they went out and got a ton of college pitchers. And four of those guys were in their rotation last year at the big leagues but three of them had an ERA over five. Like, they weren't very good. And the Padres are still willing to go out and say, no, 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 we're going to go take a prepster. And we understand he's, odds are he's not going to work out. But if he hits, he's going to be fantastic. And mm-hmm. like I, I I admire the the stones that it takes to do that in the face of having a farm system where you've sent so much talent out. I admire that. Absolutely. I admire it too, and I appreciate it. As someone who very much enjoys getting notifications on their phone of a new brand spanking superstar that has joined the team. But I also want to ask you about that other guy. Mr. Dylan. Mr. Dylan Lesko. But, but before, because I actually find this to be the more interesting of the top mm-hmm. project prospects between the two at least. Or three or four, whatever you want to call it. But before we talk about that, Mr. Crosby. Let me, I don't know if you knew this. The NFL playoffs are here. They're, they're really here, man. This past weekend, I mean, low-key kind of not the most exciting playoffs of the world, but still, they're still here. It really was excited. very exciting to watch what happened to the Cowboys on that final the, play. Okay, in fairness, yes, I did enjoy that as a hater of the Dallas Cowboys for their ability to make more money for no reason. I also enjoyed them losing. Um, but let me tell you, you know what makes me more excited? Our new sports betting partner for Locked On, man. Have you heard about this? They're the number one sports book in America. Do you know who they are? It's FanDuel. It's FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting sports fun and easy, which is great. I like fun and easy for anything. You know, mm-hmm. uh, honestly, this is, this is, uh, yeah, that's how I'm going to advertise FanDuel. Fun and easy. It's fantastic. Fun and easy um, was my nickname in college. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, <laughs> moving on. Um, so, yeah, man, I mean, with football this weekend, if you want to make a bet on the Bengals or the Chiefs, and then we've got Philly and San Francisco, they've got you covered there. They've got some future bets that are going to keep you going. Maybe you want to make a bet on, say, who's going in the MVP in baseball next year? American oh, League, National some, League? There are some fun ones for that. National Ooh. League, this team, the Padres, Ooh. have like five guy, four or five guys on the board. The favorite? Juan Soto plus 550. Fernando Tontis and Manny Machado are both plus 1,000. Xander Bogarts on the board at plus 3,000. And then down as you scroll down plenty towards the bottom, you get O'Neill Cruz. I think it's great. I love that <laughs> O'Neill Cruz is plus 20,000 for MVP. I just love it. I think it's great. Hey. Hey, if I could make a bet on just who will have the coolest highlights of the season, oh no, it's O'Neill Cruz. Cruz has to be like it's number three, Cruz. Uh, top three at minimum. I mean, the guy is just he's oozing swagger. It wouldn't surprise me if he, you know, absolutely explodes next year. But even still, guys, if you want to check out the rest of those bets, maybe you want to make some World Series bets or what have you, go check out FanDuel. It is awesome. It is cool, neat. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NFL. And new uh, partner of Locked On, which is pretty cool. Lindsay, let's talk about Mr. Lesko. I mean, it reminds me, now I will say, just to trigger some of the people that listen to my podcast, does have a little bit of a rhyme similar to Tom Telesco, the GM of the Chargers. Um, But with Dylan Lesko, Mm -hmm. hopefully he doesn't go down that route. I don't think he's that bad as a GM. But with Lesko, the reason why I find him so much more interesting is I know nothing about him. Which is always fun when I talk to you because then yep. you can you can illuminate me. You know what I mean? You can you can show me the lights, right? You know, like the fireflies in Last of Us. They show us the light, right? With Mr. Lesko, I would say that what's so interesting about it is because 
I didn't hear about him until honestly like a couple weeks ago. And more importantly, the Padres have a little bit of a pitching problem. Yes, they have Darvish, they have Musgrove, they have Snell. They re- they re-upped with Nick Martinez. They've got Seth Lugo allegedly. He's going to give the starting stuff a shot. But more importantly is they haven't had pitching prospects in a while, which is why Mackenzie Gore was so important last year. Cuz mm-hmm. everyone was like all you have is this guy, and then there was some hype about Robert Gasser, but then he's gone too. He's on Milwaukee. So there is a lot kind of riding on just trying to recoup because also, you Darvish and Blake Snell, they're going to be free agents after this year. So mm-hmm. you're wondering, and all these things coalesce together to being that the Padres have a lot of offense, and I still think that their pitching is going to be fine combined with their great bullpen. But even still, it makes you wonder, like, oh, we, you kind of you kind of want to have someone who isn't costing like thirty million dollars, you got to grow some young talent to kind of offset these giant contracts. And for me, the pitching side of things is where you're you're a lot more worried. So, tell the good folks what can we expect? What I shouldn't say expect because it is early. The man is still in rookie ball, as far as mm-hmm. I'm aware. But just tell us a little bit about Mr. Dylan Lesko. Why is this guy seemingly coming out of nowhere for a prospect folk? Okay, so things to know is one, you're not going to see him early this year. Because he was on track to be a top five pick in the draft last year. Uh, was having a fan had a fantastic year as a junior. 0. Oh, 0.35 ERA mm. in in high school. Mm. Struck out 112 batters in 60 okay. innings. Won Gatorade National Player of the Year as an underclassman, which almost never happens, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Had Tommy John surgery as a senior. Mm. So uh, now. The Padres did plenty of due diligence. They they talked to all the people. They talked to the surgeon. They feel confident in it. But the reason why he's so highly coveted is he's a young prep pitcher with a very, very good changeup. One of the better changeups we've seen in prob- from a high school pitcher in probably a decade. And that's a little unusual because the changeup is usually one of the last pitches to come out for a young player. Uh, trying to learn the changeup. It's the least effective pitch. Uh, the velocity difference, it h- kind of hurts your velocity development. But instead, he has one of the best changeups in this entire organization. He also has uh, a, a, a very, very good, like an elite level fastball as well. And the combination of these two pitches are fantastic. He has a curveball that he didn't even really have to use that much in high school. But it has fantastic spin rates, like over 3,000 RPMs, which is better than average for a major league pitcher. And so you have three pitches that all profile as being at least above average or plus, if not elite. And then the Padres are like, yeah, we can teach him a slider. And he's going to have four very good pitches. He has a very clean delivery. He has a very smooth delivery, clean arm action, good control. And the thought process is he's going to be on the mound by the summer. He'll be in rookie ball, obviously. And you're looking at a like a number two or number three, which for uh, a prospect, it's very good to be able to say, yeah, we think this guy could be a number two or number three. Uh, I can think of n- potential number one pitchers in the minors on one hand. And, th- and we're like, mm-hmm. yeah, this kid's right behind them as a number two. Uh, and you got him... It cost about three point nine million dollars, but uh, you you got him at number fifteen when in a normal year without the surgery he would have been gone in the top five. So not bad, not bad. That gets me excited. I, I raised my eyebrows. People who are watching the YouTube might know, but I raised my eyebrows a bit, you know, and I said, "Oh man, I love it when I hear this guy actually would have gone top five or top whatever if not for blank." And it's usually an injury or what have you. This reminds me of um, um, C.J. Wilcox from a few years ago. This reminds mm-hmm. me of Robert Hassel. Those guys, Padres kind of schemed them a little bit. And everyone was like, oh, wow. They, okay, I mean, they, they went for it. They didn't let the money uh, scare them off. They said, all right, we like this guy. We're going to go for him, even if it takes some time or whatever. We'll re-up the value later. That excites me. And I think that with the pods, especially in the pitching department, I am totally down for taking some chances because, like I was illustrating before, Team doesn't have a lot of certainty going forward with the pitching. They've got their whole friggin' lineup, as far as I'm concerned, is locked up for a while. At least, it, yeah. at least it could be 
for a while. You know, you've got your Soto, you've got your Xander, you've even got guys like Hassan Kim and Jake Cronenworth. There's so many guys on this team. The Crone Zone. The Crone Zone. You, you can hit it anywhere, but you can't hit it to the Crone Zone. <laughs> oh, I miss Don so much. Um, but I'm, I'm really curious because with Lesko, do you think that this Padres system, is he kind of it? when it comes to the pitching side of things. You know what I mean? Because is this just a case of, oh, yeah, he just is the one that's kind of the top one? Or is it really like, yeah, he's kind of just the one dude that they have to hopefully, at least as of right now, because these things can change in like six months, be like that golden egg that everyone's talking about in a few years as being, you know, maybe like a top 40 or whatever prospect in baseball that you can either use or flip whenever some other superstar becomes available and AJ Prowler starts getting crazy. There's a couple other guys in the system that I like. They did a good job, I think, in the 2022 draft of going out and getting uh, high ceiling guys. There, there was a pitcher they took after Lesko and Robbie Snelling. Another prepster mm-hmm. actually was a quarterback in high school also. Um, and and so probably the best athlete on the team has probably the best curveball on the in the system already. Um, I like him, but my breakout prospect, I'm, and I'm doing the farm previews right now on Locked in MLB Prospects. We're not quite to the Western divisions yet, so I haven't gotten to this. But my breakout prospect this year for this system is actually right-hand pitcher Adam Mazur. Hmm. Uh, he was a second-rounder this year out of Iowa. Had initially been at South Dakota State, transferred to Iowa. But he's one of those rare college pitchers who you can still anticipate adding some weight and velocity to. So uh, he, he has a plus fastball, sits mid-90s, can touch 99 or so. And in college, it was absolutely a, just a destructive pitch. It was so very good. The slider to go along with it was better than plus, probably close to, closer to a 70 grade. Sits high 80s, low 90s, very good. And then the changeup has gotten better just in instructs last year. He didn't pitch after he was drafted in a game, but he was in instructs. Uh, and the 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 changeup looks kind of like a two-seamer a bit, and he has a mm. curveball with it. But uh, he's he's done that thing where every year in college, all the peripherals got better. The walk rate went down from 5.3 per nine as a freshman all the way down to 2.9 as a junior when he got drafted. Uh, he's added velocity every year. He continues to get better and better. And as long as he can uh, just make it through a full season, if he can have the durability of making it through a full pro season, I think you're going to see him jump into top 100 lists or in consideration for top 100 lists by the end of the 2023 season. Really love Adam Mazur. There you go. Mr. Crosby. As a college player. I love it. Yeah. As a college player, he's one of those, like he's going to be a fast mover. Because the control is there. The the ability of the pitches are there. He's got the the, the pitch ability, the sequencing, all of that stuff. So he, he, he should be a fast mover. Now, I, I got to wonder, Mr. Crosby. Mm-hmm. You know, you're on Lockdown Padres. So it's possible that you're just trying to be kind or what have you. <laughs> you know, it's possible that you're just coming out here and saying, yeah, let me tell the kid he's, he's wearing his baseball shirt. I don't want to upset little Fernando over here and whatnot. <laughs> Is the Padres system really, like, recovering? I've been using that word a lot when it comes to the Soto trade, but is it, like, kind of... Because I have felt, you know, as we talked about earlier in the show, that it's like, oh, well, considering that all... Some of the bad moves they've made, right? Like, they've Mm -hmm. traded a whole bunch of assets for Mike Clevenger. That didn't turn out well, right? (laughs) Um, And he's not Nothing with Mike Clevenger's turned out well for him recently. Yeah, nothing with Mike Clevenger's turned out well recently. Um, They do that. They do the trade for... Austin Nola, that didn't turn out very good, right? They lose Ty France, who's like a fringe, not even a fringe, he's just an all-star caliber first baseman, right? Like, as that they've lost, and Lord knows who knows what happens with the Nationals next year. Could be a fun team, though. I actually think Nationals fans, at least you have some players who are going to play, like, somewhat immediately in Abrams and Gore. But I'm wondering, is this, like, a just good for the Padres system? Or are these guys, like, legit good, and there's actually some hope that hey, maybe in the next year they won't be in the bottom three of farm systems, but maybe they'll you know sneak into the upper half or something like that. Uh, kind of in the middle, right? It's, it's, I don't necessarily know about top half, but there's so many guys in this system who I feel like are one thing away mm. from hitting that next level of performance. Maybe it's, it's health 
Adrian Morjohn is something like tons of talent in the arm. He just can't stay mm-hmm. healthy. You know, there's there's tons of situations. Uh, Lizarraga, the the fastball, a little bit too mm-hmm. slow. It kind of blends with the changeup. Like there's so many of these guys that have a small bit of improvement that they need to do to hit that next level performance. I could see this being in the middle tier of farm systems, if that makes sense. Uh, if some of these guys do things, Samuel Zavala is a guy that honestly just kind of needs to stay healthy. And he's in contention for a top 100 prospect based off of being like the sum of his tools. And just, if he's a very impressive young position player. Nothing is like glaringly elite in his profile, but nothing's bad. He's well-rounded. The instincts are good, but he had a hamstring issue. He had a broken hammock bone in his hand. Like, just needs a little bit of health. There's so many guys that started to develop and then something happened. Either the control didn't come in for a pitcher or the health didn't stick around. You're this close to having a very good system. And I don't think they're all going to get over the hump, but I think enough will get over the hump where you can be a mid-range system versus a bottom three system. That's all I could ask for. You know why? Because the major league roster is pretty good. You know, yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's kind of worth it to trade for Ted Williams reincarnated. I think it's kind of worth it. I that, now that might be a crazy opinion that having Juan Soto no. on your team is good. But a lot of <laughs> a, a lot of people, you know, and and a lot of people who follow prospects and pay attention to prospects forget about the point of your farm system at the end of the day is to help the major league team win games. Sometimes that's by developing and promoting players and putting them into the lineup. Sometimes that's by giving you ammunition for trades. The goal of this whole thing, as much as I want it to be, yes, the goal is for us to to have a great farm system and win a bunch of minor league games. The goal is to win games at the major league level. And you sent out talent to get Juan Soto. He's going to help you win games. So it's been successful. It's like the Braves don't have a great farm system, but they won a World Series. So, like, they achieved the goal. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where I feel the Padres are, is if people are sad the farm system isn't that great, go watch this lineup. Go watch this team play yeah. offense. You know, you can steal the Phillies thing of ball go boom. It doesn't matter how many runs you give up if you're scoring a ton of runs. So that's the yeah. thing people just don't 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 forget about that. The point is to win games. Absolutely. I, I, hey, everyone loves to talk about look at the Rays and look at the Guardians. Hey, I mean, when was last time the Guardians like, you know, won a World Series? Everyone loves to talk about their development. What, what it was Beverly Hills Cop came out? I mean, it's it's been a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's been quite a while. So I think they beat I'm... Greg Maddox and John Smoltz. Like that's yeah. how long it's been. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's been so long that it's kinda like, oh sheesh. Like, you know, I've I've had this thing of just uh this prospect fetishization that a lot of these other teams have conditioned their fans to be like, Yay, let's look at the MLB top one hundred. Oh, wait, we have it. Oh, it doesn't matter if we never win. Let's just keep talking about the what ifs. And I think that with the pods, it's really cool to see where they are. And it's still cool to see that they at least got some guys that are exciting. As my professional, analytical, deep, deep, mechanically minded approach to mm-hmm. baseball, whether I can analyze a finger and all these, as you know, my number one thing Robbie Snelling, Blake Snell, similar name. I'm expecting Robbie Snelling to jump into the top 15 by the end of the year. That is my prediction. The for that curveball reason only. is very good. <laughs> if he can make the change up better, again, he <laughs> didn't throw it a ton in high school. He didn't have to. He was a fastball curveball guy. If he can make the change up average, he, I mean, he throws a ton of strikes. He's got super like competitive makeup, uh, great athleticism. If he can make the change up better, you've got three pitches that are average or better. He should be able to just pound the strike zone, get dudes out be in the top 100. He probably would be a great hitter if you'd let him hit too. Ooh, I love that. I love that we we got some Otani buzz coming in here. I don't know. It, Lindsay said it first, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I'm saying. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, and of course I'm kidding about my Snelling thing, but, uh, or am I? No, that, that's um, how this works. That's totally how this works. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. Um, this has been a blast, man. I always love having you on, even though it's not as often as maybe I would like. Maybe if some new prospect trade comes in, just because when it's a contending team, they're often, you know, there's other things to worry about the major level, as you illustrated before. But uh, before we head out, before I let you go, uh, do you have any other things you would like to plug for the good people that are listening? 
Yes, right now, my show, Lock It MB Prospects, we're doing our farm system previews. We do a different division every single week. Uh, we're also still taking questions for our mailbags on Monday. You can send nice. them to me. I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. Show's on Twitter at Locked on Farm. You can email us, Prospects at gmail.com. We also have a Discord. You can hop in there. You can uh, ask your questions. Mailbags every Monday. We are doing six shows a week until spring training gets here, folks. Love that. The grind of the Lockdown MLB Network. Dare I say, the big grinder of the network. <laughs> Lindsay, it has been an absolute blast. And everybody else, thank you for tuning in to the Lockdown Padres podcast. The only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the pod wherever you get your podcasts from. Follow me on Twitter again at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O. Or at L-O underscore Padres, just in case you get tired of my extremely, extremely dumb tweets about movies or about comic book stuff and what have you. It's an uh, esoteric course, feed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's a good... I The other day, uh, I, I was like, my friend stole my power rankings bit where I just find any niche, small thing and do a power rankings out of it. Um, I don't know. I'm still thinking of doing one next. Maybe I'll do one for just best moments in Top Gun Maverick. That'll probably be my next one. But, uh, Lindsay, it's been a blast, and I hope you do awesome on your show. And good luck to the the prospect world. because That's a lot of folks to cover and keep track of. So everybody go check out that show. And until next time, stay safe. And, of course, stay faithful, my fire faithful homies. Take care.